It's time to go Behind Enemy Lines, presented by Windows 11. Pleased to be joined by my friend Frank Frangie, the voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars, for our second visit of 2021. How you doing, Mr. Frangie? I'm doing well, Mike. Good to be on with you. How are you? How's everything up in Nashville? We get set to get up there. Is, uh, we're rested. Finally. The, the bye finally came, and we... Uh, had the opportunity to catch our breath a little bit, and that was such a big deal for this football team. Your bye was way back on October 24th. Was that a good time or a bad time for a Jacksonville bye? I think the bye might have been a little bit early. They could they could use a break right now because offensively, it's, it's a tough go right now for the Jaguars. Frank, what are the problems on offense that you're identifying right now? I think more than anything else, they don't have any receivers down the field, Mike. That's the biggest thing. Is they, they don't have anybody that can get open down the field. you got a young quarterback. He's got to learn the league. He's got to learn how to play. I think there, there's, a, there's a host of things that are connected to that. There's not much open down the field. There's one thing I would identify, Mike, it's better receivers. They need better receivers. All right, talk to me about Trevor Lawrence's year. At this point, nine touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He's been sacked 22 times. He has run the ball pretty well, 49 carries for 241 yards. You touched on it a little bit, but take it further as you characterize Trevor Lawrence's year. He's got to learn how to play. They've got to learn how to play with him. Usually, the Clemson receiver was faster than the Wake Forest cornerback. That's just usually the way it was. Well, here, they're all the same. They're all fast and they're all good. The good thing about Trevor Lawrence, Mike, he's a great kid. He's humble. He's a good dude. He understands. He doesn't throw anybody under the bus. He's going to be just fine. But we're seeing that learning process, and it's painful right now. James Robinson ran very well against the Titans back on October 10th. 678 yards rushing on the season for the second-year man. How has he done running the football since we saw one another two months ago? Mike, he's been hurt all year. He's had an ankle. He's had a knee. He's such a tough guy that he plays through it. And they're not sure what to do. But he, he, they started, he started the game, got hurt. Uh, two plays in, fumbled. You could tell he wasn't himself. So the next 16 plays, they didn't use him. They used Carlos Hyde. Then he goes back in. They're trying to figure out, do you shut him down for a while? I would probably shut him down for a while. To your question, Mike, he's been beat up, really, probably ever since that Titans game. Good player when healthy, but he's really fought that knee and ankle stuff. Frank Franchi, you gave some kudos to the Jacksonville defense earlier in the conversation. What have you liked and who have you liked through 12 games through this Jaguars defensive attack? Guy I like the best is a coordinator. They found something in this guy, Joe, Joe Cullen. He's pretty good. They've inserted Rudy Ford in as their nickel. He's more of a safety special teams guy, but he's, fast. he's one of the fastest guys on the team, but he's big. He's built like a safety. That's helped the cause. The rookie out of Georgia, Tyson Campbell, is going to be a good cornerback. So they're getting there. Miles Jack, I think Miles Jack's one of the best linebackers in the league. He doesn't get that attention because the team hasn't been very good, and Josh Allen's played at a good level. What they've got to do is they got to get the other side, whether it's Caleb on chase on or Smoot. The guy playing opposite Josh Allen's got to play better. I think that's part of it. If the offense was helping at all, the defense would be at worst a middle-of-the-pack defense. I really believe that. Even without Derek, you guys are a physical football team. I'll be interested to see how they match up there. All right, Frank. Since we've seen one another, you've beaten the Miami team that's now won five in a row. You've beaten the Buffalo Bills, and, and that certainly got everybody's attention. What's the formula for Jacksonville to come into Nashville and win on Sunday? You're going to have to keep it close. going to have to play physical football. going to have to run the ball. I, I think the Jags are going to have to run the ball because the Titans are going to run the football. They're going to have to keep the game in the teens. Right now, the Jags aren't a team. Jags, you know, the Jags are the only, and I know you know this, the only team in the league that hasn't scored 24 points in a game. But still, as you talk about this year and you see Trevor Lawrence and some of the young players come on, with what the Jaguars have in terms of draft capital and the financial aspect, plenty of salary cap room, still a, still a bright future for that organization going forward. So while down a bit now, Frank, uh, not the end of the world looking at Jaguar football moving forward. Here's what I'll tell you to that end, Mike, and I really believe this, and not just because I'm calling the games here. When someone gets that really good quarterback, they tend to become good pretty quick. So I think they've got the quarterback here, Mike. they got to go get those guys around them. That's such a big part of a young quarterback's development. And then when teams do that, suddenly they go from not very good to pretty good. You're all, in our business, as you know, we're always holding on to some hope. And we want our fans to hold on to some hope. Well, that's the hope. Frank Franchi, voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars, thank you so much for your time as always. Always great to catch up, Mike. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. 
This once again, Behind Enemy Lines, presented by Windows 11.